Well, you guys are a fantastic crowd. You have an amazing show ahead of you. This next guy here, he's one of the rising stars in the New York comedy scene. He's visiting. He just got back from entertaining the troops. Please welcome very funny guy, Jeff Sheen. How about it for him? <laughs> All right. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> this is the face. I can't. I don't know. This is the... <laughs> it's toothy. I know. I can't. <laughs> Can't help how toothy the face is. It's just, I can't add face muscle. I don't know how to muscle my face up. So my teeth kind of fan out. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Hmm? All right, there you are. <laughs> I, um, I grew up an only child. I don't know, anybody here grew up an only child? Anybody? Yeah, a few? See, you, you know. You know that it's not a family, right? It's just three people. That's all it is. It's three people hanging out in a house. I remember when I first noticed, I first noticed, I was hanging out with a friend, and he's like, oh, I gotta go home, it's family dinner night. And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go have pork chops with a married couple. So, I just enjoy your family. I'm gonna be a third wheel on a date. wondering when I can leave. Like, can I leave this date? I don't like being on this date every night. <laughs> Hate it. Did not like being an only child. Our family vacations. We're like, we're going on a family vacay. And we'd go ride roller coasters, which are designed for two people. It's an even numbered. So it'd just be me and my mom and then my dad behind us sitting with another kid from an odd numbered family. Just laughing at my dad's jokes. Like, you don't get to laugh at those jokes. Those are my jokes. I don't know you. You get weird. You get weird when you're an only, because you're just there. You're just bored. You're just alone for a long time. You're just by yourself. I would be alone for hours, because my parents would work, and it'd just be me in this house, and nobody to beat me up or anything. So I just got real weird. I got very strange. My favorite thing to do, I used to just get naked. I'd take all my clothes off. For hours, I'd be naked. Just close her off like the house is mine. And I would just be naked. And then I would melt plastic army men over a kerosene heater. I don't know why. I don't know. But I loved it. That was just my, my thing. I didn't have any siblings to fight. So I just melted plastic men in the nude. And like that's, that's how I know sexuality is fluid though. Because that's not gay or straight. But it's sexual. <laughs> like even Jesus was looking down like, well, it's not a sin, but it ain't right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why nobody put that in the book. That little boy's getting real weird down there. We just got to let it happen. It was very strange. I used to whisper, repeat. I used to have that neurotic tick where you say everything twice. And the second time is a whisper to confirm it. So I'd be like, bears are scary. Bears are scary. <laughs> and I was pale with red hair. Too. I was a ginger that whispered things. <laughs> That's a demon. That's a full-fledged demon. <laughs> Nobody wants to hang out with the demon kid. Just, hey, can I spin it out of your house? Can I spin it out of your house? <laughs> They'd be like, what was that second part? What did you just say? <laughs> you planning to do something? Like, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Like, what, are you an alien? Like, no, I'm a little boy. Oh, I'm a little boy. <laughs> I eventually stopped, not because I grew out of it. My mom just made fun of me till I quit. That's how poor people fix their weird kids. <laughs> just, honey, can we afford a therapist? No? Well, you're being weird. Knock it off, you weirdo. <laughs> He'll see a therapist later on in life. Strange. I think all kids are strange though, right? Every kid, like I saw a toddler push another toddler off a step the other day, and I think that's like a murder attempt. That's it's a murder. I think everybody murders once, and that's how you learn no murder. We all like and you're a toddler, like murder, and then your parents like, no murder. Like, oh, I didn't know. Nobody told me. I didn't know the rules on murder. I thought I could just murder willy-nilly. But I didn't have any siblings to push off a step, so I had to wait till I made a friend. I was eight years old. I haven't got my murder out of the way. And we were wrestling on a sled going down an icy hill. 
And he, he always won, but I got on top of him, and his head was just hanging off the edge of this sled. And I just started pushing it into the ice. And I could feel his head was bouncing like it wasn't smooth ice. But I just kept pushing harder like I was grating cheese. And he was reached up with his hands and I'd smack him out of the way. Like, I didn't know I was murdering. I just thought I was winning real good. <laughs> and then he rolled off. Remember, he's holding his head. He's like, you played too rough. <laughs> he didn't even know he was getting murdered. Like, what? <laughs> This kid plays rough. I gotta get out of here. Like, you're dying. I haven't got my murder out of the way. And I'm eight. I got some muscles now. So, well, yeah, I was a very. I slept with my parents too until I was about 12 years old. I slept just in bed with my parents. I had a room, but I just slept with them because I had night terrors. And they were, yeah, they tried to kick me out once, but then they stopped because, you know, I'm afraid of confrontation. I was afraid of the dark. We're all afraid in that bed. And we would sleep in this queen-size bed just for a decade. My mom and then me and then the most sexually frustrated man in the world. <laughs> just hating what he made. Like, every night he'd roll over to make love to his wife. I was looking at him like, nope. <laughs> like some twisted Berenstein Bears family. It got crowded in that bed. At one point, I was the tallest one. I'm six foot. Both my parents are five two. At one point, they would snuggle under my armpits. Like, all right, good night, you two. Snuggling under my arm. And I decided to move onto the floor. I slept onto the floor. And I remember this. It was Christmas night, and I wasn't an only child anymore. My mom was pregnant with my little sister at the time. It was finally over with, because I spent the night at a friend's house once. <laughs> and I just get woken up to her shouting, It's happening! And then she stepped on me in my sleeping bag. And then rain. Yeah, yeah, after your mom's water breaks on top of you, you're not afraid of the dark anymore. <laughs> you're not afraid of anything, really. I was like, I'm gonna sleep in my own bed. I don't think the boogeyman can touch me. <laughs> I was just baptized by life itself. <laughs> I think it'll be all right. All right, you guys are great. Thank you very much for hanging out and listening. I had a lot of fun. You're gonna love your next comic. He just recently was.